So during this talk, um, I'm aiming for it to be, for those of you who are new to UKRI, a bit of an introduction, and for those of you who are more familiar, perhaps a bit of an update as well on, on activities that are ongoing. So to kick off, what is UKRI? Well, UK Research and Innovation is the largest public funder of research and innovation in the UK, and it spans all sectors and all disciplines. It's actually quite a new organization, which was established in 2018. And at that time, it brought together the existing research councils, which uh, still exist and run uh, as part of UKRI. And they include, uh, apologies, the logos are a bit small, but they include, uh, say the Arts and Humanities Research Council, Biotechnology and Biological Sciences Research Council, as well as Innovate UK, which sponsors business-led innovation, and Research England, which supports the higher education sector. It's also worth noting um, most of the research councils act as funding bodies. However, some of them also directly employ research technical professionals and researchers. For example, STFC, which Alex mentioned in his talk today, they employ a substantial number of uh, research software engineers as well. So how does UKRI support software? This slide loosely groups the different types of support that are out there, and there are some examples as well. In terms of uh, support, one of the types of support is infrastructure. So UKRI supports institutes, facilities, and different projects. And these under, some of these undertake quite substantial software development and maintenance as part of their operations. Grant awards are also one of the other very visible ways that UKRI supports software. And I'll give some examples of that in the next couple of slides. UKRI also supports training and skills, so doctoral studentships. And sometimes there are also grants available for specific training programs and uh, initiatives such as Innovation Scholars. And I think there's a call at the moment available with AHRC for Innovation Scholars. And another perhaps less tangible uh, type of support that's also really important, important, which is around communities and networks. A couple of good examples here are uh, COSEC, the Computational Science Centre for Research Communities. So they uh, this acts as a knowledge exchange hub and also a foundation of software expertise to support research projects. And they, I noticed they have their annual conference coming up at the end of this year, if you're interested. And there's also the SSI, which I suspect that several of you will have heard of. The Software Sustainability Institute is now supported in terms of funding by all of the different research councils. And I think that this is, is important to recognize this and it shows how important software is across the whole research and innovation landscape. The next couple of slides I'll go into a bit of detail just for two of the research councils so you can see the types of activities that they've done to date. And uh, all, um, I should say, all opportunities will be available on the funding finder on the UKRI website. EPSRC, the Engineering and Physical Sciences Research Council, they support software in several different ways. So they invest in the areas of software development, code maintenance, training and skills, and also building communities and networks. I won't go through everything on this slide, but I'd just like to highlight Excalibur, which is a project for preparation for the next stage of large-scale computing, including Exascale. RSE fellowships will run until 2020, and I think 19 RSE fellowships were awarded through these schemes. Software for research communities, that was a very popular call in 2021. And the reason that was so popular was that the focus was that it enabled um, maintenance of existing software, not just development of new software. And in 2023, um, I think the deadline is coming up for the full proposals. There's a call available for strategic technical platforms. This is basically funding that will enable groups or pools of uh, RTPs to apply, research technical professionals, sorry, to apply for funding. Moving on now to BBSRC, the Biotechnology and Biological Sciences Research Council. They have a couple of regular calls that uh, people are able to apply for. One of these is the Tools and Resources Development Fund. 
These projects tend to be a bit shorter, uh, say up to 18 months funding, and these are more for high risk, high reward technology development. There's also the BBR, the Bio Bioinformatics and Biological Res Resources Fund. This is an annual call, and these tend to be for slightly longer projects, so you can apply for up to five years funding. And these are to support the need for biological infrastructure, facilities and resources. So in the past couple of slides, I've given you some examples of what the discipline specific research councils have been doing in terms of software support. A relatively new development is something called the UKRI Digital Research Infrastructure Programme. So with the advent of UKRI in 2018, there's the opportunity to work more collectively in certain areas that underpin all research and innovation and areas which are really strategically important. Because of this, the DRI programme was formed. And when we talk about DRI, we're, we're, meant, we're including many different aspects. So large scale compute facilities, data storage facilities, stewardship and security, software, mechanisms for accessing resources and data, including networks and authentication, and as well as this people, which really okay. underpin all of the above. The programme is quite new. So in 2020, the strategy was written and the vision is for a national DRI that will seamlessly connect researchers and innovators to the computers, data, tools, techniques and skills that they need. The strategy recognises that DRI is a system. I know that's a bit cliched, but you can't fund, say, supercomputing without also funding the people to run the supercomputers and help the users. And uh, yeah, crucially, just to flag here, software and uh, DRI professionals are part of the strategy. With the advent of the DRI programme, the different councils are working together, and the aim is that we'll work towards a more interdisciplinary portfolio. And we hope to achieve the vision by, in some cases, some cases um, evolving existing infrastructures to support new communities and also investing in new capabilities where possible. This slide uh, gives a bit more detail on the strategy. The drivers of the strategy are on the left hand side. So these are long term planning driven by community requirements, environmental sustainability, partnerships with other sectors. And there are five different cross cutting themes. I'll go through these quickly just so you're aware of what the DRI program covers. Um, starting from the red box. This would be foundational tools, techniques, and practices. This includes software, cybersecurity, triple AI, skills and career pathways. This is quite a complex area and contain, uh, contains many different aspects such as community building and training. Secure services and tools for sensitive data. Uh, this would include trusted research environments. Large scale computing includes all the different types of uh, large scale compute and data infrastructure. So data infrastructure would include storage as well as data stewardship and shared tools and pipelines. To give you a better idea perhaps of, of different activities within the programme, here are some examples of what we've done so far. We have been working in a pilot phase, so we had funding from 2021, which enabled us to launch some pilot projects for fairly short term, one or two year span. Going from the top, um, there were some scoping studies to assess the different, different requirements of different communities in a bit more detail, and the reports for these are now available. I've given a couple of screenshots there. So one of them was around looking at uh, software in the arts and humanities research community. And there have also been reports looking at what it would take to evolve some existing infrastructures so that they could support new communities. We launched the UKRI Net Zero DRI scoping project. This was run by CEDA and uh, the technical report for this is now available. And I think the full report will be available soon. The DRI programme also provided funding to support uh, the Ada Lovelace Centre. So this funding enabled delivery of software to enhance the national multidisciplinary facilities. One really uh, interesting and important activity was a digital research infrastructure repeat. 
retreat, sorry. So this was a five day event to help uh, technology specialists to develop additional soft skills for their work. So in, in the first talk, Alex mentioned the need, the need to, to try and bridge that gap between your specialism and say people who maybe aren't very familiar with the software space. So this retreat aimed to sort of tackle that by bringing people together for discussion and also having quite experienced PIs come in and talk about how, how they approach these things. And another example is Dare UK. So um, Dare UK is around trusted research environments. A bit of UK context. So this is what we've been doing in the DRI programme. This area is obviously becoming increasingly important for the UK. And um, as an example of that, the UK government launched the Future of Compute Review last year and the recommendations came out this March. And that does include several recommendations around software. I've pulled a few out, of, a, a few out here just as examples. But it's very clear that if we need to invest in compute, we need to, in practice, expand the provision of hardware, software, skills, and data across all public facilities. And other recommendations include increasing software and engineering skills investment to align with delivery of exascale, and delivery of exascale is one of the recommendations in the review. Other recommendations include investing in training to pr promote practices that ensure facilities are being used as, as uh, efficiently as possible and ensuring that physical infrastructure investments are paired with compute-specific skills programs. So back to the DRI program, I mentioned that we've been operating in a pilot phase. In the recent spending review received £129 million for the period 2022 to 2025. We're now moving to what we call phase two. So this will come with slightly longer term projects and more funding as well. As part of this, we've established an advisory group for DRI. So this is an independent expert body that will advise us, advise UKRI executive committee on investments to be made in, in digital. And recently this summer, the AGD met and made a recommendation for the portfolio for the remainder of this spending review period. They recommended a portfolio of around 40 projects, so quite a lot going on. And uh, the final approvals, I think, are probably happen happening now, actually. So uh, it's exciting for us, but unfortunately, it means that I can't kind of give more detail on like precise activities. But uh, I can confirm that there will definitely be funding in terms of software, skills, and also community building as well. These uh, are very important activities. So the timeline will be we'll have hopefully the approvals will come through this week and then you'll start to see projects coming out towards the end of this year and the projects as you saw, as you saw in the previous slide they they'll take many different forms in terms of open calls um funding for meetings that type of thing and lastly i just wanted to finish on the advisory group for dri so this is a, a new uh, independent body that's been set up and it includes the, the members there, they have a challenge in trying to cover everything in DRI, and we're lucky to have experts from all the different areas, so I'd like to thank them for their help in advising us. And I'd also like to mention uh, that next year we'll be doing an open recruitment as well, and that will include for early and mid-career technical professionals and researchers. So if you, if you might be interested in that, then please stay tuned. There will probably be something through mailing letters, UKRI website, LinkedIn. And thanks for listening. I'll probably be at the STFC stand over lunch if anyone wants to come and chat. And um, yeah, happy to answer any questions. Thanks. Great, thanks, Sophie. You weren't wrong, definitely. Um, kept very on the time. Uh, so we do have some questions in the slido. Um, the first one, is that it seems that most funding of the fixed time projects needs to be sent by the end of the projects. Um, yet many software related projects need ongoing support, for example, cloud costs. Um, and how do you think funding bodies can support these needs? That's a good question. <laughs> 
And uh, I've also been in the position of having to apply for lots of short-term funding to support software teams. So I appreciate that it is an element of frustration. We are hoping that by building up activities like the DRI program, uh, that we'll be able to do longer term funding in the future. UKRI is constrained by spending review cycles, unfortunately. So we do have our we do also have limited timeframes where we're able to, to spend funding. But I guess just to reassure people, we're aware that this is an issue um, and something that we're hoping to address through some of these new initiatives. One of the things that we would like to do through the DRI program, which is going through approvals at the moment, is a slightly different mechanism for funding software. So this will be very much a pilot stage, but we're hoping that looking at how we fund things slightly differently might lead to more stability, I guess, for people in the future. Thank you. Um, next question is: Do UK, UK RI recognises the value of digital research infrastructure, but at university level that can be lacking? So software is very cited and doesn't fit into traditional metrics universities use. Are there any uh, plans to help push recognition of DRI roles from the top down? So UK RI is a signatory to the Technicians Concordat, and there is some work going on around um, talent and skills at the moment in that area. Um, and I think also part of the reason that the programs established and things such as the SSI are funded, hopefully this will lead to a, a gradual recognition in, in different areas of how important these roles are, but I realise it's still an issue for some people. What I wanted to say is if you're working somewhere that perhaps doesn't recognise um, that RSEs are able to apply for funding or be part PIs on grants, then just uh, give someone at UKRI a call, whoever's running the, the uh, funding call, because they'll be able to help with that. Okay, yeah. thank you. Um, and are there any specific plans for creating career paths for research technology professionals? So I'm aware that there's work going on in several different places. I think STFC are doing some work around this and uh, also within some universities as well. It's quite a complex problem to do. So I think within the DRI program, it's not something we're looking at at the moment, but uh, we're hoping that the first step, so bringing people together, the communities together for discussion will, will help support this. Mm -hmm. okay. Great. Uh, and a quite general problem is that it's, that is specifically difficult around RSEs is that skilled RSEs needed in a project are not necessarily available from day one of the funding period. Uh, how do you think you can tackle these delays and sort of allow flexibility? That's a good question. And I guess um, one of the calls that I mentioned from EPSRC at the moment is strategic, strategic technical platforms. And this will be for uh, groups of people to be able to, who will be able to get funding and then they can work on various projects. So there are things like that um, that are emerging that are really helping to support groups of people that then can work on different things rather than looking at it from the other way where you have a project and then you have to employ staff. Sometimes you're available. You're um, sorry. You're able to apply for a an extension to a grant if you're not able to get staff in time. So do you have a look at that? Uh, that might be an option for you. And I'm aware that um, it can be quite challenging to recruit people in the software development space as well. So we're hoping that if we if we increase the um, the, the the number of people that are out there that have these skills, then hopefully it'll be less less hard to hire. We'll see. It's yeah, a long-term thing. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, great. And how do we avoid brain drain into industry where salaries are in academia kind of compete? Uh, we'll find a support uplift for RSEs in particular senior positions. So I'm aware that brain drain is an issue, and um we've had some interesting discussions uh, at previous conferences around this. Some of the ways that people mitigate this are just trying to put out, trying to attract people in who maybe aren't motivated by having the highest salary, but motivated by being engaged with research uh, more closely. I know that that's maybe not very consoling to those of you who are trying to recruit at the moment. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm not sure I can add much more to that at the moment, I'm afraid. Um, I think that in terms of funding uplift, that's I'm afraid that's not an area I know much about. I don't know if anyone else can chip in, but uh, I can I can find out and follow up on that. 
Yeah, any knowledge from the from the crowd? Fine, makes sense. Uh, cool. Uh, EPSLC invested a lot in RS and fellowships and sort of sustainability in the past. Is it envisaged that other research councils uh, might do the same in areas that still need investment to boost the RSE profession and software intensive research? This is a good question, and um, I think it's something that we're hoping to address through the Digital Research Infrastructure Program. So there are some council communities who traditionally are more um, in, in the digital space, but there are some really interesting projects and quite large communities emerging from areas such as the arts and humanities and also economic and social sciences. So the DRI, through the DRI program, we're hoping to evolve, say, um, some of the data resources and some of the supercomputing facilities, if they can have additional funding to bring on additional communities. And a lot of it's about raising aware awareness as well of what people can do with these tools. And that's also part of the work that we're hoping to do. Hoping to do. Yeah. Right. I uh, can sense the need for lunch. Maybe one last question. Yeah. Um, we'll go for where do you think the focus will be for UKRA's future support of digital? digital infrastructure? That's also a good question. And I'm aware that the, the DRI program covers quite a lot of different things, physical infrastructure, and then also people. We had a recommendation over the summer when the AGD met that uh, to ramp up funding for skills and software. So I think that that's something that we'll definitely see kind of building up over the next five, five or so years, I guess. Yeah. Do you know what sort of form that would take? So the building up those skills? Um, so the things that are going through approvals at the moment, there are several different kind of pilot activities. And I think what we'll do is assess how, talk to the people who are affected by that, see, see how those are operating, and then maybe uh, expand those or look into alternatives if people think that they're not working. It's quite a challenging area, I think, and it's you don't want to kind of make an intervention that that's that's then not helpful. Uh, so yeah, it's kind of trial and error, but yeah. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Great. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, once again.